Cyberbullying. Now, I luckily have never been cyberbullied, nor do I know anyone close to me who has, so I may come up as a bit naive. But despite that, I still have a voice and I wish to add my two pennies into this topic. Personally, I think real life bullying will always be worse than cyberbullying, and I'll tell you why. Take the five senses. Sight, sound, touch, smell and taste. When it comes to real life bullying, you can see the abuse, you hear it if it's verbal, if it's physical, you can touch it, if the bully gets too close, you may unfortunately have to smell it, and as for taste, they may force you to eat dog poo like that scene from Step Brothers, but it's uncommon. Maybe the taste of your own blood from a heavy punch, but hopefully it doesn't get that far. As for cyberbullying, you can see it through text, but I'd be more annoyed at the bully's face than text. Sounds? If it's an audio clip, yes. But I guess I'm thinking more generically like text. You can't hear text. Other than that, you can't touch, smell, or taste text. Because the internet is a very uncontrolled and unfiltered state, it's perceived as dangerous. And considering all of the arguments against censorship and rules that go against total free speech, it's probably not going to get safer anytime sooner. Consequences of cyberbullying, however, have become greater over the years. Some people get cancelled, fired from work, or face charges as the result is suicidal. The only thing I can do is ease the pain, I suppose. There are simple ways to avoid cyberbullying, and I'm not talking about simply just ignoring it and moving on. I'm talking about the abilities to block people on social media and mute people on online chats. Since you can't physically stop someone from cyberbullying, it's good to have these actions at your disposal. But of course, maybe you want to try and have thicker skin, as it's quoted. This is for the comments that use text speech, words that are shortened and abbreviated. Typing in proper English seems more formal and mature in what you're saying. The more text speech you use, the less you should be taken seriously. For example, the phrase KYS, kill yourself. I can't take that seriously. We all went through that phase where we would pointlessly use text speech in situations. Examples including replacing the word you with the letter U, or replacing the word two with the number two. Looking back, it's just embarrassing. LOL, or LOL, is the only big one still used by people of all ages. There's even some text speech you probably don't even know the meaning of. This next point is important for death threats. It's very, very, very unlikely that you'll ever see that person in real life. They're probably not going to hurt you. We have that theory that a lot of cyber bullies have no life and are insecure in real life, but they feel invincible behind a computer screen. It's good to have that theory around because we can believe that most cyber bullies wouldn't say what they say in real life. Thus, again, very unlikely to approach you in real life. Unless, of course, they have something like an address or something private, which is when you should report them to someone. Some people make the excuse that hate comments or even real life bullying are considered mere criticism and it's something we should take and if you try to block it, you can't take criticism. Criticism is too good of a word for it, don't sound so formal. The only criticism people should take is constructive. Constructive criticism shows why they don't like something and possibly how to improve. There are plenty of hate comments that don't explain why they don't like something or say how to improve, so what's there to take? When you constantly don't show that you want someone to improve, it's the moment when I can tell that you don't care and shouldn't be taken seriously. I don't know if you've noticed, but anonymous usernames are becoming less common. People have started using their real names. That just makes it easier for people to get caught, leading to consequences I mentioned prior. But what keeps people on social media, given the harsh, toxic environment it is? There are obviously nice perks to an online presence. It's always nice and intriguing to look at analytics to find out where in the world people are caring about what you post and the number of followers and subscribers that actually care. But remember, they're still strangers at the end of the day and their opinions shouldn't be that much of a matter to you. They don't get to tell you how to live your life. Real life communication with people close to you is more comforting than through online. Perhaps appreciated even more because of the lack of it through the pandemic and how many people are unable to cope with the loneliness. If you're being cyberbullied by someone local to you, like in a school, do report that to someone. That can get settled easily through real life confrontation, which is obviously very effective. Or can be. That's all I can say really. 
I know this may not be a huge detailed video and I've probably missed certain kinds of cyberbullying out there, but hopefully this reaches out to someone. Or, if nothing I said helps, then your last option is the good old fashioned, turn off the computer. I know we should all be strong when venturing the internet, but if it's too hard to take, give yourself some peace. Enough for one day. 